mischief in your eyes and fire in your veins. Hey guys, and welcome back to my channel, and welcome to my second part of my wrap up for November. This is the only other part that I am doing this month. I read 20 books this month, which is awesome because I only bought, I think, 11. So it worked out in the end. I actually, for once, did my goal of reading more books than I bought. It's not going to happen in December. I'm already four books for one book read. It's the third one I'm recording this because I finally feel a little better, so... I'm able to record to get this up on Monday for you guys. So let's just get started with the, I think, nine books I need to get through for this part of the wrap up. So the first one should come as no surprise to anyone, but that was Winter by Marissa Meyer. I am not going to talk about this in my wrap up here. I have a full review on my channel and on my blog for this. So I will link them both down below for you guys, and I gave this a 5 out of 5 stars. And I can't wait for stars above. Please hurry up. I'm sorry about the, the, the fridge as well. It's been going off really bad lately. I don't know why. After that, I read The Strange and Beautiful Sorrows of Ava Lavender by Leslie Walton. I discovered this book through Thoughts on Tomes, a.k.a. Sam, um, and I really wanted to read it after knowing that it was one of her favorite books. So I picked it up from my library and I read it, and while it did start out a little bit slow for me, um, overall the rest of it definitely made up for it. Um, it was just beautifully written. It was so amazing that I ended up giving it a 5 out of 5 stars, even with the slowness at the start of it. It was worth it. I loved it. After that, I read Little Knife by Lee Bardugo. This is 2.6 in the Grisha trilogy. Um, and while I gave this a 5 out of 5 stars, I wish I had read the rest of the Ravkin folktales beforehand because I feel like I might understand this a little bit more if I read the other ones. So going into this month and probably reading the rest of them this month, I will probably understand this a little bit, a little bit more. <laughs> but um, I absolutely loved this folktale. It had a great message to it and it was just beautifully written. And like I said, I gave it a 5 out of 5 stars. After that, I read Everlost by Neil Schusterman. Um, I really enjoyed this. It was quite a different take on, like, an afterlife scenario. Um, I really enjoyed it, and I have actually purchased the entire trilogy. Uh, I had originally borrowed Everlost from my library, which was book one in the Skinjacker trilogy, and when I saw the the box set for the trilogy on Book Outlet during Black Friday sale. I purchased the entire trilogy, so it'll be here Monday when you guys are watching this, and I'm very excited, and hopefully you guys will get three videos on Monday. Hopefully my post office doesn't suck this time. Yeah. <laughs> After that, I read The People of Sparks by Jean Duprow. This is book two in the Book of Ember series. This is a four-book series. I have read the third book. I just finished it yesterday on the second, and I'm actually going to the library to borrow the fourth one in a little while. But, um, I really enjoyed this, but I definitely liked City of Ember more. I definitely think that City of Ember is going to be my overall favorite. Um, quite a few of the characters in this really annoyed me, and it wasn't so much childishness, because I know this is a children's series. I mean, it says right here, juvenile fiction. But, um, I don't know, they just really, really annoyed me in this book. And it wasn't the main characters, but it was a couple people from Ember, or a couple pe from people from Sparks just, just got to me, and I couldn't stand them. Um, but I still gave this a 4 out of 5 stars. Good book, not as good as The City of Ember. 
After that, I finally finished the Daughter of Smoke and Bone trilogy by reading Dreams of Gods and Monsters by Lady Taylor. I will not be reading the novella for this series. I feel like it's unneeded and I'm already pretty annoyed with the series, so I'm not going to continue by reading the novella. It's just not worth it to me. Um, but this trilogy overall would have been way better as a duology. I, feel, I really feel like Lady Taylor should have put Days of Blood and Starlight and Dreams of Gods and Monsters together into one book, taken out a lot of the slowness that was in these two books, and had a more fast-paced book, and it would have been ten times better. This was just not a good trilogy. It should have been a duology. Um, I did enjoy this one a lot more than Days of Blood and Starlight, but it was still a tiny bit slow for me. Um, it was definitely easier to read, though, and I ended up really enjoying the ending, and I did give this a 4 out of 5 stars, which was more than I gave Days of Blood and Starlight. I think I gave it a 3.5. <coughs> And I am still sick and my throat is starting to hurt again. So let's finish this up. I have three books to get through. After that, I read Ruby, Ruby Red by Kirsten Gear. Um, this is book one in, I don't know, I've heard the Precious Stones trilogy. I've heard the Ruby Red trilogy. I just refer it to it as the Ruby Red trilogy, honestly. Even though, you know, it's all precious stones. There's sapphire blue and then emerald green. Um, but I thought this was pretty interesting. I loved the plot twist in this, especially the plot twist in the end of the book. Um, I can't wait to see where the series goes. I actually have sapphire blue sitting near me in my library pile. So I will get to that at some point this month. Um... It's actually my next book after I finish Bloodlines by Kate Carey, which is my current read. But yes, I ended up giving this a 4 out of 5 stars, so it was pretty good. After that, I read what has to be probably one of my favorite reads of the month besides Winter, and that was Illuminae by Amy Kaufman and Jay Kristoff. This is book one in the Illuminae Files, and it was just absolutely crazy. This book was such a quick read, but it was so action-packed that it was just so good. I mean, the size looks huge. It is 599 pages, but the way it's set up, it's pretty fast and easy to read. A lot of it is just like pictures and graphs and stuff, so it's a quick read. Um, I just loved this so much. I can't wait for the next book, and they are going to be hard-pressed to top this book. I don't know how they're going to do it. I feel like this is a series that might end up going downhill, because they did so amazing with the first book. But I gave this a 5 out of 5 stars, and I definitely will buy the next book when it comes out. And for my final book, I finally finished an ebook that has been taking me months to read, and that was The Boy Who Lit Up the Sky by J. Naomi I. This is book one in the Two Moons of Raynor series. Um, this book was just all over the place. It was so confusing. Um, between the point of view changes that were going from, like, one story to another, like, all of a sudden... Like, at the start, this was happening, then all of a sudden you have a point of view change and this is happening. It was bad. But between that and the weird time jumps where you were going into the future, then back, then into the future, then back. And it was just like, and there wasn't really a cohesive way of knowing where you were in the series, in the book. It was just so confusing. I was confused 99% of the time reading this book. I did not enjoy this book. I gave it a chance. I almost DNF'd it quite a few times, but I hate DNF'ing books. Um, but I definitely will not be continuing this series. I have no interest in finishing this series at all. And I only gave it a 3 out of 5 stars. But... That is it for this video. I hope you guys all enjoyed it. If you did, give it a huge thumbs up. 
and I'll see you guys all in my next video. Bye, everyone. Cause you were born with mischief in your eyes.